Hey guys, Bridget here. In this video, I want to talk about the design systems in Figma and we're going to utilize this uh, beautiful resource by Apple, which is uh, the iOS 18 and iPad uh, OS 18 UI kit, which you can download for free on uh, the Figma community. So let's get started. And uh, what we're going to focus on is, uh, first of all, what are the essentials to have uh, in uh, any design system? Because this is a recurring question that uh, I receive over and over. So as you can see over here, we have uh, all sorts of uh, different pages with uh, the components uh, of the design system. And this is something that uh, is going to be quite common in uh, the very majority of uh, the design systems. You might find it in the main file. You might have it uh, as we have uh, in the company that I'm working on with, uh, which uh, has uh, a separate uh, component file since uh, we have uh, a lot uh, going on and uh, we need uh, to basically organize and structure our design files in the most efficient way possible. But uh, overall, uh, the very first part that you want to focus on uh, is going to be the colors. So as you can see here, it's a tiny bit different than what you usually see in uh, most design systems. But uh, the main lesson here is that uh, you need to focus on uh, the main colors, uh, which are going to be utilized for that brand. So you always want to think about the primary, secondary, maybe tertiary colors, uh, and then uh, even system colors. Uh, which are essentially going to be the colors that you're going to utilize, for example, for the success states, for the warning states or the error states. And you even want to consider things like the shades of black, maybe you have lines in your UI or other elements which are most likely going to utilize some sort of um, gray shade. So these are going to be the very essential that uh, you want. And uh, usually the way that uh, I like to create this uh, is uh, in a sequence. So you might have uh, the main color, which uh, say it's this uh, blue. And then uh, you want to figure out what are going to be the shades, uh, which are going to be on the lighter side. And uh, as well, also what are going to be the shades uh, that are going to be on the darker side. And uh, you don't have to pick these uh, randomly. There's actually a scientific way that uh, you can actually extract uh, these uh, and uh, basically figure out what are going to be the intervals and the steps uh, of colors, uh, especially if you want to, for example, have, uh, say, five uh, colors uh, in uh, different tints and shades uh, or six uh, or seven or eight. And uh, the way that you do that is you simply go on Google and uh, you search for tint generator or color generator, and you're going to find all sorts of different tools which are going to enable you to basically find uh, these uh, different tints and come up uh, with uh, the perfect color palette so that you don't have to guess uh, as we're doing uh, uh, randomly now. So this is actually something which uh, you want to do for pretty much the majority of the colors. Then yet again, it really depends on the complexity and uh, really how what you want to stretch the design system. This isn't really something that uh, you should see as uh, the end all be all and uh, that you should apply in each and every single design system really depends on the company and uh, the goal. So that's uh, the very first part. Then over here we have the materials, which is quite specific for Apple's guidelines. And uh, the very next topic that I want to talk about is going to be the typography, because this is actually extremely important. You always want to have uh, the typography established. And uh, for the very most part, if you're working on uh, a website, you must have uh, the heading ones uh, all the way to the heading six uh, established uh, as well as a body font uh, and um, size and uh, when it comes to the body you can actually come up with uh, different types uh, of uh, uh, sizes so i usually like to have body medium body large and body small since that always gives uh, 
quite a bit of flexibility when you, you're dealing with uh, a web design, but even in UI UX, uh, it's going to simply be instances where you want uh, a larger uh, size uh, or a smaller size uh, of uh, a body uh, font. So that's uh, something that you want to keep in mind. And uh, also miscellaneous uh, fonts uh, or font types uh, for the actual um, call to actions uh, and uh, anything which is miscellaneous, you know, captions, uh, uh, footnotes, uh, and those type of things. So I think overall uh, here, um, they're not utilizing the uh, headings, as you mentioned, because of course it's very specific to iOS. So this is kind of like the accept exception to the rule based on their needs, uh, of course. So that's another thing that you want to keep in mind, but it's important to establish uh, the color and the textiles as the very first thing. You can uh, move on to the components, you can move on uh, to even things uh, like uh, the layout guides in uh, some instances after, because uh, these are going to essentially be the backbone of your design system. And then you can expand it from there. And the key word here is expansion because uh, a design system is a living and breathing document. So it's not something that you establish uh, today and it's going to uh, not be changed or not be adapted uh, forever. It's actually quite the contrary. There's going to be evolution. And uh, one of the main benefits of having a design system is that say that five years uh, down the line, uh, your company or the brand uh, uh, wanted to go into a complete rebranding. Uh, the design system is going to be extremely beneficial in that scenario because you can easily go ahead, change the colors, change the typography, change uh, also the elements and, and the components and uh, all of that is going to ideally be synced uh, within uh, your design files so you can make uh, bulk updates uh, which uh, are going to be extremely useful for the company in a matter of uh, a very short amount of time and then of course you can move on to all of the other components uh, which uh, are going to be the backbone uh, of uh, the actual structure of the design system, as you can see over here. So my recommendation at this point is uh, if uh, you're new to design systems, uh, definitely have a look at the uh, free design systems that you can find on Figma community. Simply download uh, a file and uh, start experimenting and uh, looking how are these uh, elements uh, structured uh, uh, what is uh, the way that they are um, utilizing the layer system, how they're utilizing components, variables, even the naming, uh, which uh, is going to be really, really important, especially as you scale. And then uh, start uh, building your very own design system because uh, there really isn't uh, a way around uh, doing it in this field. You learn so much by actually doing and also making mistakes. Uh, it's uh, the first design system is not going to be perfect, but you're going to learn so much from it, especially as you scale and you see uh, how certain uh, patterns are not going to be as beneficial as others in your project workflow. So I really hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, feel free to check out also the other videos that I have on my YouTube channel. There's over 900 and they're all entirely for free. So hope this helped and I'll see you in the very next video.